guys, welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. We are running desperately low on bread. So instead of going to the store, I'm going to make my own home baked rolls, which if you've ever been to the inn, you know what they taste like, you know they're delicious. So as a special treat for Jeff, I decided to make him a batch. So yay! yay. Baking is actually not all that difficult. I actually love doing yeast bread baking because it's sort of a, um, it's a living organism. So it changes every single day, depending upon the humidity, which we had thunderstorms yesterday. So it's a little bit humid today. Um, so it'll rise a little bit more, um, depending upon all different factors. So it's kind of fun. So all I have in here to start with is a little bit of sugar. Sugar basically will feed the yeast to help it leaven. And then to that, we're going to add two teaspoons or so of yeast from what I've been that hearing. That was two teaspoons? Eh, about that. Wow. Maybe a little more, you know, me and my eyeballing. That's the way I work. <laughs> and then to leaven this, we need uh, basically sort of lukewarm water. It should be at about 110 degrees or so. Um, that will basically help the yeast to sort of start its uh, leavening process and start activating it. So it's gonna start eating that sugar in there and it'll start to bubble and froth up. Um, in about 10 minutes or so, we'll check on it and see if it's all um, frothed up and then we can go from there. Alrighty, so as you can see, the yeast has been sitting there for about 10 minutes or so and it's gotten all frothy. That means it's active and it's alive, which is a good thing. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by adding a little bit of salt, uh, probably about a teaspoon. You know, my teaspoon measurements are not always so accurate. Uh, six tablespoons or so of extra virgin olive oil. I basically just count to six in that. Is about okay, how I baking is such an exact science. How do you get away with this? Okay, so baking is an exact science, generally speaking, unless you're dealing with yeast. Yeast is fickle and it's completely unique every time. So you really have to have a feel for the bread and you have to just kind of pay attention to the feel of the bread. So yeah, there are, you have to be fairly particular with it, but not the way you have to be with like a quick bread. So thank you for asking that peanut gallery. So we've got a third of a cup of sugar. And then now we're gonna start adding the flour. So this is kind of a, again, to feel, and I'll show you how I like to do it. I don't like making a mess in my kitchen as much as I possibly can, so I like to knead everything right in the bowl. So we're gonna start off with roughly, maybe two or so cups of all-purpose flour. And I like to use an organic uh, flour from whichever brand you like from the store, um, just something that's not GMO, um, not overly bleached. And first I start by just stirring this together. And you can see this is still really, really, really loose. So I'm gonna start slowly adding a little bit more flour at a time. And then stir it again. And then once there's enough flour in there to where it's not like overly sticky, I will switch from using my spatula to then kneading by hand. That way you can really get a feel for whether or not you've developed the gluten in the flour and whether or not you have enough flour in there so it's not super sticky. So I, can you see this here? It's just starting to sort of have like a bounce back and it's not super, super wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and at this point switch over to kneading by hand. So keep a close eye on this so you can see what it looks like. Add a little bit more flour and then you basically just do an over and under, or under and over movement, I should say. Adding in the flour, kneading it, just so that you continue developing the gluten in there, and it starts to develop a nice bounce back, a nice elasticity to it. Do you scrape the sides and all that when you're doing this? You don't or? really need to too much. I do a tiny bit, but you can see it's still a little bit too sticky. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more flour, another probably quarter of a cup or so. And then at this point, as I'm kneading it, you'll start to see at every move, see how that does that? Push in and it starts to bounce back. Kind of hard to see on camera. Get real close and I'll show you as soon as I finish kneading here. So most of the liquid here is absorbed and it's fairly dry. I'm gonna switch it over here and I want you to get real close, okay? See how I push down? And then see how oh, that's, yeah, now we see it. that's what I'm looking for. So that is now adequately kneaded to the point where it will rise beautifully. And I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil over this and cover it with plastic wrap. And then this is gonna set aside, be set aside in a warm place, probably just on top of my stove top um, for about two hours or so. And ideally this will leaven by about double its size. And at that point, I'll show you what to do with it next. 
Alrighty, so our yeast and our rolls have proofed here. They're about double or so in volume here. And what I'm gonna do is just kinda separate it from the side there and it kinda starts to deflate a little. This will make roughly eight to 10 rolls. And I'm gonna show you how I like to shape the rolls. So basically I pull off um, what's about two inches of di in diameter or so for each roll. And then I like to just kind of shape it into a nice little ball and tuck in the edges underneath like that. Show the bottom. See how the edges are all tucked in? Let me do it a couple times so you can see what I do here. Again, about two inches or so in diameter. Make it so it's nice and smooth on the top. Tuck those seams underneath. Place it on our baking sheet. I did line my baking sheet here with a silicone pad just so that the rolls don't stick. You could also just drizzle a little bit of oil or olive oil on there um, and that would do the same thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and shape the rest of these. We're gonna let these proof another hour or so until they're about double in volume. And then we will stick them in our oven, which is gonna be preheating at about 375 degrees. And those will bake for approximately 20 minutes or so. So as soon as these are done proofing, we'll check back with you. Alrighty, so we have our rolls all shaped and proofed. We ended up with nine, I'm gonna say nine and a half. Nine and a little rent roll, that'll be mine. <laughs> Runts are always the best, our cat was the runt. So these are gonna go in the oven and our cat seems to get ginormous. So maybe this will exceed the others by the time it's done in the oven. We'll pull these out in about 20 minutes or so and they'll be nice and golden brown and I'll show, it, show you what they look like. Okie dokie, these are done. And I don't know about you, but next to the smell of bacon, I think the best smell on the planet is the smell of freshly baked bread. So, so we need to make some bacon to have with your bread. Well, we made some yesterday, so there's a lingering bacon aroma. <laughs> sure there is. And oh my God, those two smell fabulous. Look at these fabulously beautiful, they're my beautifully golden brown buns. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. These will last for probably, actually, since they don't have any preservative in them, unlike store-bought bread, which will last for probably way too long. If you put these in a Ziploc baggie, they'll probably last for about three, three to four days or so. So they won't last for a super long time, but promise you're not gonna have leftovers because you will leave them so fast. You can also freeze them and they do freeze well. So um, enjoy it, let these cool completely. Go home and make them. Making bread is super easy. You do not need to go to the store. That's too much of a hassle. Take care, guys. I really do love your golden buns. That's way too much information, Jeff. Okay. <laughs>